Hey, and welcome back to the Domus Land. So I sat down last week with a guy by the name of Matt Webb, and he is doing something pretty interesting. Now, my channel kind of goes around the whole politics, document review, and stuff like that. But I wanted to sort of move away from that and talk about this uplifting story. And I really enjoyed this story so far, and I will be interviewing him here in the future. Um, unfortunate thing is, is that I suck at interviewing. Um, so I just want to get that out of the way. So if this video really isn't the best quality, I apologize. That is me. That has nothing to do with him. He did a fantastic job. And But his journey is quite epic in a lot of senses a lot of people call him legend on my on my comment sections and stuff like that essentially what matt webb is doing is he's traveling across canada on a three-wheeled honda big red trike to do three things essentially he is trying to honor his friend actually he's not trying he is honoring his friend who uh, passed away in november of 2021 and in, in a motorbike accident. And the second thing he's doing is raising money for the charity who reached out to him and his friend during the time that he was in hospital to help them out and stuff like that. And I do have some information on that charity. I also uh, threw in a little interview that I had with the president of the charity. Uh, also, uh, he's doing it to set two world records. Let's see what Matt Webb's up to. <clears throat> what day did you start your journey? Uh, January 1st at 10 p.m. And then I went out in the woods to take the trails and got stuck, broke my glasses, uh, turned around, went back to the start point again. Uh, you know, got my composure back, fixed a couple things that got cracked and stuff like that. And uh, I left 100 Mile House uh, January 2nd around 2, 2.30 a.m. And uh, hammered down, went to the Lone Butte Hill, which is like a nine degree downhill yeah uh, it was pretty sketch but made her down celebrated a couple of videos of TikTok there and, that, and uh rolled right in the the jasper the next day uh, i drove two days pretty well straight slept on the side of the trail for a good hour hour and a half and then uh, when i got in jasper i slept in the johnny on the spot for about an hour to warm up and went to a hostel after that had a wicked friggin' 12 hour sleep and then uh yeah moseyed on out of town and been gaining kilometers ever since like uh what's the date today the 16th 17th 18th 18th so uh yeah like out of 18 days i took probably six or seven days off for rest so i uh, i'm 2000 just about 300 kilometers in i think i'm doing great um, i'm pretty well on schedule with what i want it to be with a little bit extra time off but you know you, you got to treat your body like a temple, right? So, yeah. So you're uh, not traveling tonight, it looks. No, uh, I, I traveled uh, today. I left uh, first thing this morning there from Wolseley, Saskatchewan, and I rolled into uh, Oak Lake Beach. Uh, somebody from the interwebs gave me their cottage for a day or two or three, and I'm going to do some ice fishing tomorrow and possibly do a meet and greet. Now, would you mind talking about what started this whole event with your uh, friend Anthony? Yeah, so uh, last year, uh, me and Anthony went for a ride on our motorcycles. He was driving a 750 Honda. I was driving a 100-year anniversary Dana Lowrider. Uh, we were driving in Porter's Lake, got into an S turn. He got hit. The van was kind of over the yellow line. He was close to the yellow line. She just clipped his knee and, uh, you know, basically a head-on collision. It sucked the van, it sucked the, the bike into the van. Uh, I was behind him. I Luckily, I didn't crash into him. I was able to stop safely, park my bike, call 911, calm the lady down that was in the van, and then go back and help assist Anthony. I took my belt off. His bone was sticking out of his leg. I... Uh, tourniqueted it off saved his life gave him after two weeks and uh, sadly he uh he passed away due to complications internally and uh it, it is what it is so for the the year afterwards i just worked myself to death never took no time off just you know what i mean just tried to avoid it and avoid it and avoid it and then with uh, the one year anniversary of it came up it was uh i knew i had to do something i had to get it out of my head i had to talk to about you know bring it up and, and explain to what happened and talk about it and 
So yeah, so uh, I've always wanted to do the, the big red adventure. It's just, why not do it in his name? And me and him had matching 84 big reds. So it's kind of, kind of suiting that I'm, I'm dragging one behind me now. And he's, he's basically following me the whole way. Yeah, exactly. It's a great way to honor his uh, memory. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think in the news article from Saltwire, they said that you were carrying around that belt still. Yes, I, I wear it daily. Yeah, so uh, it's a fundraiser for Bikers Down Society. Uh, 75% of all donations given to me is going to go to them. The other 25% goes towards getting Brittany across from coast to coast, right? Oil changes, whatever. So comes down to if you go through GoFundMe, they take a cut too. So on average, every $100, I get an oil change, right? So uh, it's in my pocket it's been a 20-year goal of mine it's been embedded in my head since i was 19 so uh yeah it's uh it's been a a long way to get here and sadly anthony's passing is uh the button that pushed it to fucking get started right so for a really good cause i'm uh i'm super humbled by all the support that i've been getting it's crazy that mainstream media is not touching at all i'm getting more support from down in the states uh, made it in uh, the Dirt Magazine last night and uh, the the Drive dot com. Okay. So uh, it's a uh, it's quite pretty awesome to know that I'm getting worldwide recognition. Hey, so I'm just stepping in here for a second. Just want to go over all the things that he's talking about, the articles and stuff. I will be putting down in links. Um, I did read through all of them except for the Dirt. I haven't been able to find that one, so I'm gonna have to get him to send that to me. Uh, in regards to the charity, though, I did do an interview with the president of Bikers Down, and I'm going to put in a little clip here uh, just to kind of fill that in. Bikers Down Society is there to help you in Nova Scotia. If you're a motorcycle rider in Nova Scotia and you have a Nova Scotia motorcycle license, you are now a member of Bikers Down Society. And our mission is to help injured riders in the province and do road education the person who was injured all they have to do is apply and there's prerequisites on what you must have but it's on our website at bikersdown.com and also on our facebook site which is bikers down and we're there to help the bikers and we also do charity work and one of the charity works we did is a four-year-old girl uh, needed heart surgery and they lived in Yarmouth. So we as bikers down did a motorcycle ride for her and raised $10,000 in one day. And it's called the destiny ride. So that's basically what we do. We have bikers helping bikers. All right, so before we get into the world records that uh, Matt is trying to set here, um, I just want to say when it comes to donating money to charities and stuff, it doesn't matter if it's Red Cross or anything like that, you should always do your research, right? Because uh, you, you want to make sure that the charity you're going for is valid, right? I personally believe that this is a great charity. Now, I live in British Columbia, so if I was to donate to it, it's not helping anyone near me, but it, it really is a great charity, and maybe one day they'll be all the way across Canada. We're going to go and ask Matt Webb about his Guinness World Book of Records and uh, how he's doing that and everything to do with that. Yes. Uh, so I contacted Guinness way back, uh, like the 1st of October before that. And it was a two, three month process. Like I wanted to start the 1st of December, right? So I never heard back to them from them about a start date or about uh, if there is a like an actual record that, that needs to be beat and um, until like the mid of December. So uh, there is a current Guinness World Record, but it is set with a spider. Uh, so one of those skidoo looking stupid things, uh, 13,500 kilometers. Okay. So that one there is basically the one that I'm going to try to beat. But also there's a 24 hour period one, uh, the most kilometers in 24 hours. I believe was around 418, 412 kilometers. And I crushed that going in the Jasper in minus fucking 30 degree weather, right? So wow. I did uh, 504 kilometers that night. Uh, 11 and a half hours of it was a straight stint. And uh, I was fucking chilly, man. Yeah. I, had, I got a video of me. Uh, I turned a Johnny on a spot into a sauna. So <laughs> <laughs> once you get cold, you got to get warm sooner or later, right? So but, for uh, the 
records, um, does Guinness have to be there for? No. You to so get I have to do live updates. Of, uh, I have GPS coordinates, which times like each time I I put a pin, it'll have the time. So it'll tell from pin to pin how many kilometers, how long, blah blah blah. Right. So uh, anytime, and I've I, I've not been going a direct route. I've been zigzagging through to gain more kilometers. Been going range roads, so side roads, secondary roads, uh, secondary highways, ditches whatever right back roads alleys and every time i take a turn i gotta pin that fucking hit that pin so there, there is gotta be a detailed map at the end of it but it's just i got too much other stuff on the go to keep that up to date right now <laughs> yeah. yeah but you'll do your best right at least to try and, oh that's uh... it I, I i try to keep people like it I, i'm keeping track of the kilometers as best as possible but once we go through the gps it'll narrow it down a lot better yeah, for sure. Because, like, if I go down a, a road to get gas and then the gas stations are closed and I zigzag it and out and I forget to hit the pin, you know what I mean? It is it's it is what it is. So there's got to be a couple kilometers here and there that are different. But, yeah, it's, uh, so the 13.5, like, that's a, that's a big, big goal to do. But uh, so I am currently now in Manitoba. So it's a uh, 400 kilometers ish straight shot to get to the other end. So I'll probably be a uh, two, three days here, frigging around, zigzagging north and south, bypassing Winnipeg and all that stuff. So um, when I get through Ontario, that's when it's got to get to get to the lot of kilometers, right? And I'm not going highway. I'm going to try to stick to the trucking roads, logging roads, ice roads, go north, go Quebec City, Labrador City and then do Newfoundland point to point, zigzag all through there too. And then Cape Breton, inside of Nova Scotia, all of Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, outside of Halifax and like outside Nova Scotia. And then end at Sunset Inlet Campground, sunsetinlet.ca, check her out. So whether or not you win this record, um, I think that you would be winning the record if the only person to tra traverse across the country with a spare vehicle in tow to fix your and, vehicle and in the dead of winter <laughs> and in the dead of winter yes that's <laughs> so, so, like guinness when they told me that there was an, an existing one with a spider i was like that's not a, that's not a big red like no. it should be a, it should be a different one it should be the first uh you know canadian coast to coast on a atc like yeah. an all-train cycle not not a a, a three-wheel device because mm -hmm. anybody can jump on a spider in summertime and drive canada twice like <laughs> yeah pretty going cool, 100 right? kilometers an hour <laughs> yeah <laughs> not 30 35 dragging another one with you <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so that is mr matt webb's journey for three goals honor a record and charity so if you want to see more of this, please let me know down in the comments or just follow my channel. And we're going to be doing another interview with him, hopefully in about a week here. And uh, essentially, I'm going to do a much better job with the interview because I've learned a lot from this experience. So you have yourself a wonderful day. We'll catch you later.